So the standard position of an angle, as I mentioned before, we start on the positive x-axis. So this is our initial side right here of our angle. That is where we always start. And then we rotate to the terminal side. Okay, terminal meaning that's where it ends. Okay, and width applies in that too. Okay, <clears throat> um, that would be the positive angle there. Okay, positive angles are measured starting on the positive x axis and rotating counterclockwise. Now, I know typically we don't think of counterclockwise as being positive, but that's the standard that they came up with, so that's what we've got to roll with, okay? Um, so we can also, that angle is probably about 135 degrees, okay? That angle is about 135 degrees. Now, this angle has another name. We can um, find the negative angle of this by starting on the positive x-axis and rotating clockwise ending up in the exact same location we're still on the terminal side we just went in a different direction so this would be um, negative 225 degrees if the positive angle is 135 the negative would be negative one negative 225 we'll talk about that here in a second um, but the important part right now is counterclockwise is positive clockwise is negative, but we start in the same place for each one. Um, and we call these coterminal angles, okay? 135 degrees and negative 225 degrees are an example of coterminal angles. Co meaning same or together. Um, they have the same terminal side, um, but they just have different measures depending on the orientation. Now, we could have also gone around more than once okay so that's my note there angles can have measures greater than 360 degrees so if i start here on the initial side and i go past my terminal side for a minute all the way around that's 360 degrees and then i go an additional 135 and stop okay that's the exact same uh, angle but in this case, it would be labeled as 495 degrees. The exact same angle, it's just we went around an extra time than we really had to to get there. So I added 360 degrees to that 135. I could have done the same thing the negative direction. My picture is getting really crowded, so I'm not going to do that right at this moment. Um, but you can do multiple rotations in either direction. Okay? All right, so... We are going to find two negative coterminal angles for these angles right here. So 350 degrees, we need to find a negative coterminal angle. So the easy way to do it is just to subtract 360 degrees. So negative 10 is one negative coterminal angle. And if we need another one, we just subtract 360 again. So negative 370 degrees is our other negative coterminal angle. Now, radians can be a little bit trickier, but really they're not, okay? If you look at them from a fractional standpoint, they're really not that bad, okay? So if we were subtracting 360 degrees when we were in degrees, how much would we subtract in radians? Two pi. Two pi. Okay, 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi. All right, now I'm going to show you this without a calculator because if you understand it, it's going to make so many more things so much easier. Okay, I'm going to subtract 8 sevenths minus 2 without using my calculator. Okay, ignore the pi for a second. If I was going to subtract 2, it needs to have the same denominator. So I need to express 2 as 14 over 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So that means negative 6 pi over 7 is one of my coterminal angles. And then if I subtract 14 pi over 7 again, then I get negative 20 pi over 7 is my other coterminal angle. Okay? Now, we can keep repeating this process over and over and over and over again. Um, but 
I'm just going to hit the first two that I run into. Yes, sir. The only problem with that is that I want the answer in radians, so then you'd have to convert it back, and you risk the mistake of making you know, of making a mistake in the conversion. Some people do that; it just takes you way longer than it really needs to. Um, so, like I was saying, looking towards the future, it's a lot easier if you just get a handle of the radians. Okay. Um, now. I do want you to be able to do these fractions without a calculator, especially looking towards the future, but if, if you're totally uncomfortable with it or if you want to check it, doing it in your calculator, you just leave the pi off, okay, because if you put the pi in there, then it's going to throw in that decimal and it's going to get all nasty. Okay, leave the pi off, subtract 2, turn it to a fraction, put the pi back on the top. That's all you have to do. And then subtract 2 again turn it back into a fraction, there's, there's the second one, okay? So, I'm going to keep going without a calculator, but if you need to reference it, that's how you do it. Okay, let's find some positive coterminal angles. Okay, so we need to add, okay? Let's go back in the other direction, so I need to add 2 pi to 5 pi over 3, so that would be adding 6 pi over 3. So that would give me a positive pi over 3. If I add another 6 pi over 3, that means I get 7 pi over 3. Now, I'm not adding something different in this problem than I was subtracting in the last problem. It's just the 2 pi is a different fraction because it means you're a different denominator. Okay, 6 over 3 is still 2 pi, just like 14 over 7 is still 2. Okay? So I don't want anybody to be thrown off by that. It's just dictated by the denominator. All right? Negative 265 degrees plus 360 degrees. Um, let's see here. What would that be? 95? Yeah. Okay. 95 and add another 360, and that would be 455. Those are two positive coterminal angles there. Right. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to find one positive and one negative for each of the following angles. And we're also, and I didn't write this on there, but we're going to identify whether it's between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi, depending on whether we're in degrees or radians. Okay, so 30 degrees itself is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, so the coterminal angles are going to be outside of that range. The reason why I mentioned that is because that's the terminology that's used on the worksheet, okay? So if we find a positive, then we add 360, so our positive would be 390 degrees, and our negative would be negative 330. The degrees typically are pretty easy. Uh, if we add 360 to negative 450, we get negative 90. It's still negative, so that means we need to add 360 again to get the positive. Okay, we need to add 360 again to get the positive angle. Okay, so that was because negative 450 degrees is more than one rotation in the negative direction. So that means when we add 360, it's still going to be negative. Um, and then we got to add 360 again to get to the positive. Okay. Now technically, you could subtract 360 to get another negative coterminal angle. Um, so negative 810 is also a negative coterminal angle. All right. I just prefer the, the smallest one possible. So if I instead, on this problem, if I instead, instead of asking you for a positive and a negative coterminal angle, if I just asked you for a coterminal angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, then 270 would be the answer that I'm looking for. And add it until it's between just one single rotation. Yes, sir. 
Well, it, it's because this was more than one rotation. Right? That negative angle was more than one rotation, so when we add, it's still going to be a negative angle. So to get a positive one, we had to add again. Um, if 30 was negative, then we would add 360. That would give us positive 330. Uh, and we would subtract 360. And that would give us negative 390. Okay, let's look at the radians. 22 pi over 3. 22 pi over 3. So that's a positive angle. And if we think about it, 22 pi over 3, that's more than one rotation, right? Because one rotation would be 6 pi over 3. That's actually more than, uh, that's what, that's almost four whole rotations? No. Yes, almost four whole rotations. Because every 6 pi over 3 is a rotation. So 6 pi over 3, 12 pi over 3, 18 pi over 3, then it would be 24 pi over 3. So we're just short of four rotations. So we're going to have to subtract a lot to get to a negative um, angle. So when we subtract 6 pi over 3, we get 16 pi over 3. Okay, that is a positive coterminal angle. If we subtract it again, we get 10 pi over 3. That's another positive coterminal angle. But I'm having to keep going because I haven't hit a negative yet. 4 pi over 3 is another positive coterminal angle. Finally, negative 2 pi over 3 is um, a negative coterminal angle. So 16, 10, or 4 pi over 3, all those are good as far as an answer for um, a positive coterminal angle. Now 4 pi over 3 is the only one that falls between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, 4 pi over 3 is the only one that's between 0 and 2 pi, but those others are also positive coterminal angles. Yes, sir? Right. Okay, let's do a negative radiance. Okay, negative 7 pi over 6. Well, since it's negative, let's add uh, 2 pi, which in this case would be 12 over 6. 12 over 6 is 2. Okay, so that gives us 5 pi over 3. Or, excuse me, 5 pi over 6. That was on the 3 train there. Okay, there's a positive. Um, so then that means that we do need to subtract it to get a negative. So negative 19 pi over 6 is... We're adding or subtracting 2 pi every time, so I need to express it over 6. So 12 over 6 is 2. Okay? So before you jump into the problems on the worksheet, I want you to look at them with me. Okay? 13 through 24 say find a coterminal angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay? So that means sometimes you're going to have to subtract, sometimes you're going to have to add, and you may have to do it multiple times. Um, to get an angle between 0 and 360. Same thing with the radians. It says find a coterminal angle between 0 and 2 pi. You may have to add, you may have to subtract, and you may have to do it multiple times to find one that's between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? So I didn't say find a positive and a negative or whatever. I want one that's between, is within just one single standard rotation. 